Russell here at Levine. Today we are, every game is awesome. We are really going to talk about a game that changed gaming to some degree, and that is Dominion. Now this has been, Dominion came out I believe in 2007 or 8. 2007. So it's almost 10 years old. So this is kind of a retrospect on this deck building game. If you've never played Dominion before, I'm going to show how it's played in just a moment. Um, and then we're going to talk about the game and maybe all the different expansions coming out. But you already know that I like it. If you've never played it, you need to play this. Yes. Here's how it plays. There is a lot of Dominion stuff. This is my case that I keep it in. And you can see that there, these are all the cards. These are all the rule books from the different ones. And these are the tokens and things over here. You do not need all this to play the game. I just like a lot of variety. But there is a lot that you can so get. So if you like expandability, there's a lot going on. Let's take a look at how the base game is played. Here's a possible setup for a Dominion game. Now remember, some of these cards come from the different sets. Uh, like for example, I got these money cards from a special set they had that where the money cards look differently. And some of these cards are from the base game, some are from multiple expansions. But this would be kind of a basic game of Dominion. You're going to have a certain number of these cards out here of copper, silver, gold, estates, duchies, and provinces based on the number of players. You will have 10 other cards that are randomly drawn or you can pick. The different sets come with sets of these cards that work together. Each player is going to have their own deck of cards which will be made up of three estates and seven coppers for 10 cards. You're going to shuffle uh, this deck of cards and you're going to draw five of them into your hand. Each player is going to do that and then one player is going to take their turn first. Now Dominion is really easy to teach. You use the ABCDF method. The first thing you do is in your hand if you have an action card you can play that action card. So let's say this market card here was in my hand. I could play this. You can only play one action card and then do whatever it says on it. So this action card says draw another card plus one card plus one action, hey, I can play another action card, plus one buy, and then it gives me a virtual money to spend in this turn, uh, one coin to spend. So that's a pretty good card to play. Perhaps this one here, the Oasis, it gives me a plus one card, plus one action, plus one virtual money, and then I have to discard a card. Not as good as the other one, but this one has a cheaper cost. The port here gives me plus one card, and plus two actions on it. So I get to play two more action cards. The miser here, I can choose one thing on the miser. I can put a copper from my hand onto my tavern mat, which it comes with this set, or I get plus one for each copper that is on my tavern mat. So I could put several copper cards down and then this miser could be worth more money. This militia card here, uh, gives me plus two virtual money and then every other player discards down to three cards in our hand. This is an attack so it hurts other players. Fortunately the game also comes with these blue cards, the blue background. You can play when someone attacks. Like for example this one, you can play it as a normal action on your turn, plus two cards. But if someone else attacks and it's not your turn, you can reveal this card as a reaction and the attack does not affect you. Uh, this one here lets you trash a copper card from your hand. That gives you three extra virtual money to spend this round. Now this game has discarding and it has trashing. Trashing basically means take a card out of the game forever. Uh, discarding goes into your own discard pile. So remember ABCD, the first thing is action. When you're done with an action, you can then buy. So here in my hand I have an estate, which is no money at all, but I have four copper. They're each worth one. I can buy one of these cards here. Each card has a cost, four, five, four, five, five, four, four, three, four, and two. So I have four, so I could pick any of these, but I can also buy more copper cards. They're free. Zero, a silver card, which is cost three, but in the future when I draw out my hand, it's going to be worth two. A gold, which costs six, but in the future is worth three when buying things. And estates, duchies, and provinces, which are completely worthless cards. That's why you start with three of these, except at the end of the game, they're going to be worth points. So you can buy one thing unless you played an action card that gives you more buys. Then C, A is action, B is buy, C is cleanup. In cleanup, you take all the cards in your hand, whether you use them or not, all the cards you played, all the cards you bought, and you put them in your discard pile. And then you will draw five more cards from your deck. If your deck is depleted and you need to draw more cards, you will shuffle your discard pile and put it into as your deck so the cards that you buy will start coming up in your hand. So you see next turn, I have three coppers and two estates. 
You will keep doing this. Players will be taking turns. The last thing is draw. So it's action, buy, clean up, draw, and you just keep going around and around the table. The game will end when three different stacks are completely gone. That can be three of these stacks here, and each of these stacks has 10 cards in it. It could be one of the money stacks, very rarely is that. It could be one of these victory point stacks. Then the province victory points, which are worth eight. These are the best victory point cards in the game. If this stack is gone by itself, that will also end the game. So when that happens, each player will take their entire deck, everything that they have, cards in their hand, cards in the discard pile, cards in the draw pile, put them together, and simply add up the points. Nothing else matters at that point. Doesn't matter how many money cards you have or cool action cards, and whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. And then there's so much more. What I showed you is the basic game, but you can add more. There are curse cards that some cards you can put in other people's decks that are actually worth minus one victory point. You can buy an expansion called Prosperity, which gives a new victory point card that gives 10 victory points, costs 11, and a new Platinum, which is worth five and costs nine. There's an expansion called Seaside, which gives you these orange cards that when you play them, they give you something now, then they stay in front of you, and your next turn, they give you something again. There's cards like this one here, which give you coin tokens, which you can save from turn to turn, and you don't have to spend all your money on that turn. There's an alchemy set that gives potions, and some cards require potions to buy them as well as money. There's cards that are two different things. You'll notice this is an action and victory points. So you might buy this. It's expensive, but it's at two points in any game, and during the game, you can use it as an action card. There's cards that give you little point tokens. And again, you, they, point tokens are cards you don't have to worry about clogging up your deck. Um, the tokens are better than the cards. And then there's other kinds of treasures. For example, this is like a one, just like copper. But when it's in play, action cards cost two less. And really, there's a ton of different things. You can make the game more complex, or you can just add in and subtract. There's 25 different action cards in the base set. So you have tons of combinations. Then there's 25 that come in the next set. And some of the sets only come with 10 action cards. But the, the, here, this pile here is one of every action card. So they're, really, the possibilities you have are enormous. All right, that's basically how Dominion plays. Let's get back to me and Jason. Do you remember the first time you played Dominion? Yes, I actually played Dominion before it came out. Um, Val, who worked for Rio Grande, had a copy of it at the World Wargaming Championships and said, Jason, you want to play this game? And the cards were just literally had numbers one, two, and three for the uh, copper, silver, and gold. The action card didn't have pictures or anything, just words on it. And I played it and I said, wow, this is fabulous. They only, she only had one set of 10 cards and she was just playing the same set again and again. But I played it and said, wow, this, this is just blowing my mind. I've ne I had never played a game like that. I had played Magic, obviously, but it turned Magic on its head and made it the opposite, where instead of putting it together, now you're instead building it as you go. And deck building wasn't even a term at that point. And yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I remember I actually played a similar set, although I believe they had more cards by the time I played it. And again, it was from, you know, Val brought it to, and I played it, and I was just, my mind was blown. Because at the time, we didn't know what deck building was, and the only thing that people said, they said, well, it's kind of like Race for the Galaxy. And I was like, oh, I love Race for the Galaxy. And then I, I looked at it, and I was like, this is nothing like Race for the Galaxy. And then the idea of building a deck just, it really blew my mind, and I really enjoyed it and really liked it. Yes, me too. I mean, I when I played it, I, <laughs> you're gonna laugh, but I actually won, my, won the first game that we played and I was like, wow. Um, I couldn't believe like the whole way you, you get cards and then you're using the cards to buy more cards and then you have actions and you can chain your actions along. And I, I just felt like this was such an incredible experience. And right away I said, when is this coming out? When is this coming out? I need to get my hands on a copy. And I saw it in 2006 before it had come out. I think it came out in April of 2007, like right after that. Something like that. Well, here's the, here's the thing then. So then it, Dominion came out and then they came out with deck builder, deck builder, deck builder. And now deck building is just a regular thing. It, yes. There's not, there's actually the number of deck building games that come out in the course of a year has actually dropped. But we're see, you see it sometimes show up in games as a minor feature of that game. But a lot of other deck builders come out. Do you still think Dominion is the king of the deck builders? I do. You do? Okay. I do think Dominion is still the king of the deck builders. It holds up after all this time, and I think a lot of the reason it does is because of all the expansions that have come out for it. And they really add different mechanics and different things into what was a great game on its own. But now when you add in like the cards that last more than one turn from, from Seaside, or when you add in... Um, you know, the potions from alchemy, or you add in the adventures, 
where you have to do little side things. Everything kind of adds to the experience and it makes it such a rich and fulfilling game. Now, I like a few other deck builders more because I like, for example, I like Marvel Legendary. I like Thunderstone Advance. Um, I like um, the Space One from Bonacore, which I'm forgetting now. And I like these different uh, games because I like the injection of theme into them. Dominion is very themeless. However, I still love Dominion because it's straight mechanical. You can play it. I said it's all about games, but it's one of those games where I go boom, 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 boom. Next turn, boom, 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 boom. And when you play someone else who's good at the game, like when me and Jason, if we play two player, it's pretty fast. We're just going draw your hands, and it's fun, and it works well with two, three, and four. Yes, and you could pop out games really quick. I mean. You could play a game, it depends on the set, but you could play a game in 15, 20 minutes. I like the variability. I really like that you don't have to worry about it being it getting stale. I mean, I don't think I've ever, you can't play every variation of this game because how many variations are there? Like, isn't there like 10 million different combinations? Something ridiculous. There is 10 million, but I have played one set more than any other, which is the original base set. And I, I, I will try never to play that set again because <laughs> I played it too many times to teach people, but there's enough simple cards to teach people the game with that you can use new sets. Now you mentioned the expansions. I think with Dominion the game is amazing and fun, but I think you should add at least one of the big box expansions in because it really more than doubles the amount of combinations. I agree. For me my favorite is Prosperity and then after that Seaside and then maybe Adventurers that come down. I like almost all the sets. Alchemy I like a whole lot less than the others although you like it more than I do. Um, no I like the potion aspect. I like that there's another power. I absolutely hate the Philosopher's Stone card and we'll never play with it because you have to stare and count all the time and just obviously online it's different but in person you don't want to have to count your cards every time you play a card which takes too long but i i prosperity is my favorite as well because it adds that extra the extra platinums and the extra um the ones after the after the the, the higher level ones i can't think about the name of them the victory point ones the high ones oh yeah whatever um, estates and the, whatever who the, knows the high one that i can't think of right now but it adds a whole new level of more money and more victory point cards and i really like that the best of them i um I also like the ones that have, the one that has where you get the individual cards when you win the challenges and you can pick the individual cards. Everyone can have individual cards into your deck. What was Cornucopia, that? I think? It was Cornucopia or Hinterlands. It was one of those. Yeah, one guys. of those two. There's a, there's a lot of expansions and you really don't need them all. But the thing is, they really do provide a ton of variety for the game. And there's another expansion can be released in a month or so that we're both excited about. So, yes. what is that? Kingdoms or something like that. I forget what it's called. King, um, I think it is Kingdoms. It's, it's I mean... I have every expansion and I'm looking forward to getting the next one and seeing what they've added into it this time. Yeah, and I don't see many people playing Dominion as much anymore, but, and I understand why, because, you know, we live in the cold of the new and there's always new and better games, but it's one of those games that I think I'll always have in my collection just because of the pure, I, I'm a big theme guy, but the pure mechanisms of this game are very solid. What's your awesomeness rating? My awesomeness rating on Dominion is a 10. Is a 10? It's, it's I mean, you don't get better than this. Even though there's been other deck builders, it's still the king of the deck builders. It hasn't changed much over the years, other than a few variations and a few new things, slow playing cards where they last for two turns, etc. But it is still the greatest deck builder. Anytime if anyone sees me and says, hey, want to play a game in Dominion? I'm like, yes, I'm in. That's how much I like the game. Yeah, I, I mean, I only give my top 10 games a 10, so I have to give Dominion a 9 or a 9.5. But it's still an amazing game. If you've never played it, check it out. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. Jason Levine. And you've been watching every game. It's awesome. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.